from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Pat Fitzpatrick. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of Rita Marion Walsh of Upper Tontalian, Nova Scotia. This Mass is offered in memory of Rita, who passed away two years ago today. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the risen Lord be with you all. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and fasting ha and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when any of you has a grievance against another, do you dare to take it to court before the unrighteous instead of taking it before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels, to say nothing of ordinary matters? If you have any ordinary cases then, do you appoint as judges those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to decide between one believer and another? But if the believer goes to court against a believer and before unbelievers at that? In fact, to have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud, and believers at that. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, male prostitutes, sodomites, thieves, the greedy, drunkards, revilers, robbers, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And this is what some of you used to be. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. The Word of the Lord.
children of Zion rejoice in their King. The Lord takes delight in His people. Let them praise His name with dancing, making melody to Him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went up the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people. From all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon, they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him for power came out from him and healed all of them. The Gospel of the Lord. You, well, uh, the readings bring us back to our beginnings, back at our very beginnings, and there are lawsuits among Christians between brothers and sisters, not in the same family, but among the newly made Christians, all of whom had joined the family of Jesus, the risen Christ. Uh, St. Paul was a late arrival. He had trouble accepting that newborn followers of Jesus would bring each other to court. Couldn't they at least settle their quarrels among each other and not go to court like unbelievers? And then we hear him say, have you not given up your former ways, what you used to be? You've been washed 
in the waters of baptism. You've been sanctified and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit. And here you are bringing each other to court. Couldn't you, Corinthians, show outsiders how you can be reconciled one to the other and settle ordinary cases among yourselves? In so doing, he says, you would show how you'd be putting into practice the words of Jesus in our gospel acclamation. I have chosen you from the world to go out and bear fruit that will last. Not just a day at a time, but a long lasting way. And then our gospel takes us back to a key event in Matthew's gospel, the 12 that Jesus chose to be his apostles. And Jesus considered this to be such an important event that he spent the whole previous night in prayer to God. He wanted to choose the right men. He, he, his, his would be a very small group, 12, but he wanted to get it right. And unfortunately, it turned out he made one mistake. He chose Judas Iscariot as one of the 12. Well, there were among, you might call, a motley crew, four Galilean fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James and John, then Philip from uh, Bethsaida in Galilee, near the River Jordan, Bartholomew, also from Galilee, Matthew, a toll collector and author of the first gospel, doubting Thomas, who later on was not with the others on Easter Sunday and had his doubts about the risen Christ. He wanted proof of this resurrection. Another James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, an extreme nationalist, Judas, son of James, Judas Jemison, he might be called today, and Judas Iscariot, the one who would betray him. I hope I have mentioned all of that group of 12. In his book, Jesus, Jesuit Father uh, James Martin writes, Jesus calls people to work together with him as a group. Jesus could have worked alone, or he could have selected uh, maybe a single person as his assistant. But instead, he called many people. He called 12 people to labor with him. Well, they took their place alongside Jesus as he addressed the great multitude of people from down south in Judea and Jerusalem and others from Tyre and Sidon up north in Galilee. He was bringing them from the south and from the north. And how proud they must have felt to be selected to be on his team. After a night of prayer, Jesus knew who he wanted. If you and I were there among uh, that morning, we might well have wanted to touch him, the, this orator, this healer of physical or troubled people. And an interesting question may be, what would you and I have said if he had asked us to join them? Would we have said, oh no, not me. I'm, uh, I'm really not worth it. And he said, no, I'd like you to come and be my follower. And there may be others maybe among us who said, sure, whatever you say, I'm ready to go with you. 
Well, it's interesting to follow that group of 12, mainly four of them, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, as they gradually lived out what it meant for them to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Please stand for our prayers. For all those in our daily TV Mass community who are dedicated to the care of the sick, may they receive the grace to continue their ministry of compassion and caring with hope and joy. We pray to the Lord. For personal health problems and concerns that have been sent to us, we pray to the Lord. For a return to the faith for children and grandchildren, we pray to the Lord. For marriages that are in difficulty, we pray to the Lord. Most gracious God, be with us early and late as we move through today and through the days and weeks that lie ahead. Be with us to challenge us. Be with us as guide to teach us from all we experience. Be with us as we move from places of comfort to new places and new beginnings. Be with us as we discover and nurture solidarity with one another. Help us to recognize one another as neighbor, men and women of every description, without any exception of persons, even those who may differ from us in background, language, and religion. Recreate in us your own spirit, Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray that our sacrifice may be offered for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
we pray the third Eucharistic prayer. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the, lay, with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and our bishops, and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer that peace to one another. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery and humbly implore, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through the same Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television, and you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. Rejoice and do 